Good morning. It is Monday, June the 15th, and we are gathered here uh, for our Lectio Divina reading for the day. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a continuation of the speech of Stephen. Uh, <clears throat> and when we left off, he was talking about Moses, and God had just sent uh, Stephen or Moses to to Egypt, um, and Stephen's going to continue that speech this morning. We're going to hear the continuation of that this morning in Acts chapter seven, verses thirty-five through forty-three. This is a long stretch, a long speech in Acts chapter seven, so that's why we're breaking it up. I'm going to read that text four times: Acts chapter seven, verses thirty-five through forty-three, and we're going to engage in some a process of listening to the text and listening to God as we are aware of God's presence in our lives. In the first step, I'm going to read, and you are welcome to follow along or listen to me, and asking what's the passage saying? What are the facts in this passage? Um, and how does that interact with your experience? What sticks out to you as you listen? And then we'll keep silence after each of these stages. So Acts chapter 7, verses 35 through 43, the continuation of Stephen's speech. It was this Moses whom they rejected when they said, who made, who made you a ruler and judge, and whom God now sent as both ruler and liberator through the angel who appeared to him in the bush? He led them out, having performed wonders and signs in Egypt at the Red Sea and in the wilderness for 40 years. This is the Moses who said to the Israelites, God will raise up a prophet among you from your own people as he raised me up. He is the one who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on, at Mount Sinai and with our ancestors. And he received living oracles to give to us our ancestors were unwilling to obey him. Instead, they pushed him aside, and in their hearts they turned back to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make gods for us who will lead the way for us. As for this Moses who led us out from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has happened to him. At that time they made a calf, offered a sacrifice to the idol, and reveled in the works of their hands. But God turned away from them and handed them over to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. Did you offer to me slain victims and sacrifices forty years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? No. You took along the tent of Molech and the star of your rod of your god Raphim, the images that you made to worship. So I will remove you beyond Babylon. Let's keep silence as we think on these words. read this text a second time, and here we're going to meditate and reflect on it, continue and ask what stands out, but also how is God speaking to me here? God is with you, and God wants to have a relationship with you. How is God speaking to you here through this text, and what is your reaction? Let's listen to this again. <clears throat> continuation of Stephen's speech in Acts chapter 7, 30, starting at verse 35. It was this Moses whom they rejected when they said, Who made you a ruler and judge? And whom God now sent as both judge, ruler, and liberator through the angel who appeared to him in the bush. He led them out, having, having performed wonders and signs in Egypt at the Red Sea and in the wilderness for 40 years. 
This is the Moses who said to the Israelites, God will raise up a prophet for you from among your own people, and he raised, as he raised me up. He is the one who is in the congregation in the wilderness, and the angel who spoke to him at Mount Sinai, and with our ancestors, and he received living oracles to give to us. Our ancestors were unwilling to obey him. Instead, they pushed him aside, and in their hearts they turned back to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make gods for us, who will lead us, who will lead the way for us. As for this Moses who led us out from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has happened to him. At that time they made a calf, offered a sacrifice to the idol, and reveled in the works of their hands. But God turned away from them and handed them over to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. Did you offer to me slain victims and sacrifices 40 years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? No. You took along the tent of Molech and the star of your god, Rothan, and the images that you made to worship. So I will remove you beyond Babylon. Let's keep silence as we meditate on these words. In our third step, we're going to pray and respond to God based on our meditation. Share with God what has been stirred in you as you hear this text. This is a hard text. Um, the text that speaks of God's judgment. Ask questions. Um, offer thanksgiving or confession where appropriate. But especially in our prayers, we ask God for what we need. So join with me here as we listen to this text a third time. It was this Moses whom they rejected when they said, Who made you a ruler and judge? And whom God now sent as both a ruler and liberator through the angel who appeared to him in the bush. He led them out, having performed wonders and signs in Egypt at the Red Sea and in the wilderness for 40 years. This is the Moses who said to the Israelites, God will raise up a prophet for you from your own people as he raised me up. He is the one who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him at Mount Sinai and with our ancestors and he received living oracles to, uh, to give to us. Our ancestors were unwilling to obey him. Instead, they pushed him aside, and in their hearts they turned back to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make gods for us, who will lead the way for us. As for this Moses, who has led us out from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has happened to him. At that time they made a calf, offered a sacrifice to the idol, and reveled in the work the works of their hands. But God turned away from them and handed them over to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. Did you offer to me slain victims and sacrifices forty years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? No. You took along the tent of Molech and the star of your god, Raphim, and images that you made to worship so I will remove you beyond Babylon. Let us keep silence as we offer prayers in response to God.
I'm going to read the text one more time. And here we're going to contemplate these words again as we remain in God's presence. We're going to rest here and enjoy God. And in our quietness, we're going to listen for God's response to us. And we're going to commit ourselves to live lives transformed by God's presence in our lives. Here's the text one more time. It was this Moses whom they rejected when the angel said, Who made you, or when they said, sorry, who made you a ruler and a judge, and whom God now sent as both ruler and liberator through the angel who appeared to him in the bush? He led them out, having performed wonders and signs in Egypt at the Red Sea and in the wilderness for forty years. This is the Moses who said to the Israelites, God will raise up a prophet for you, whom your own people, from your own people, as he raised me up. He is the one who was in the congregation in the wilderness when the angel who spoke to him at Mount Sinai and with the, our ancestors, and he received living oracles to give to us. Our ancestors were unwilling to obey him. Instead, they pushed him aside and in their hearts turned back to Egypt, saying to Aaron, <clears throat> Make gods for us who will lead the way for us. As for this Moses who led us out from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has happened to him. At that time they made a calf, offered a sacrifice to the idol, and reveled in the works of their hands. But God turned away from them and handed them over to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets, Did you offer to me slain victims and sacrifices forty years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? No. You took along the tent of Molech and the star of your god, Raphim, the images that you made to worship. So I will remove you beyond Babylon. Let's keep silence as we contemplate these words and remain in God's presence. Lord, we thank you for your constant and abiding presence with us throughout the days of our lives. We pray that through these times and others, we would grow in our awareness of that presence and that it might transform us so that we live more faithfully in ways that are consistent with the kingdom of God proclaimed by Jesus. Help us to be the people that you call us to be. We ask for Jesus' sake. Amen. Friends, thank you for sharing this time. And I wish you this day God's peace.